this. Let me say who we got in the room. Had to be, I want to say, it was, what was the year, 2016, 17? She came to South by Southwest Facts. and performed with us. Yep. She didn't have to do that. She got up at 5 in the morning. But that was a testament to her work ethic. That said a lot about her drive, her ambition. Since then, Cardi B has amassed 12 billion streams to date, okay. 7 billion video views, First female rapper to achieve five number one Billboard Hot 100 hits. I swear this room better be applauding. If you standing in this room, you should applaud. Yo, that's First dope. female rapper with two diamond singles. I like it. And Bodak Yellow, what she performed for us. Yes. Cardi B made music history as the first female rapper to reach uh, two Billboard Hot 100 number one hits and the first solo female rapper to win Best Rap Album at the 2019 Grammy Awards. Every song on Invasion of Privacy is RIAA certified. Please welcome back to the show Woo! the Washington Heights queen herself. I did a lot. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me keep going. Hold up. I wrote some other stuff down. You know, you're going to be on Vogue Mexico, right? Yeah. September issue. Yeah, I just, I just yeah. was on that. Yeah, yeah. and dope. we're not even tapping into all that you've done. I'm not mentioning being a mother, mm -hmm. and I'm not mentioning being a wife, oh, yeah. which is two different things, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we want to welcome you to the show and say congratulations Thank and how proud you. we are. Yeah. Cardi B, y'all. Yeah. Cardi B. Cardi B. Kind of made me almost emotional. Well, you gotta sometimes reflect because I know you you you're in a demand. People pull you from every direction. You gotta be cognizant of what you're saying, everything where you go. I seen you twerking in Paris, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and when I saw you twerking in front of the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> I said, Cardi looks free. Yeah. Looks liberated. Right. Yeah. I've been, I've been I've been having like a good uh, uh, a good year. Like I feel like this. For the past year, like I just been like more like home mode, mm -hmm. and it feels good. It feels good. It feels good. When I list all of these things, I remember seeing an interview when you were twenty five, and in that interview, you said, you know, I want money, um, I want career, uh, I want husband, I want a husband, kids, and I want money. Yeah. Uh, you got hus, you got a husband, you got kids, and now you got a lot of money. Like, yeah. and it's years later. I'm curious to what's on your vision board today, about at 30. Um, uh, my vision board. I, I mean, I look, I look up to a few artists, and I look up to the artists. Not even just the artists, just like artists and influencers that just have the beat. Mm -hmm. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. I really. That's like that's the goal to be there, but I know to be there in order to be there. I got to put in, like, grind and hustle again. Like, like I'm back in 2016, 2017, 2018. So it's just like I have to come out this mommy mode or this comfort uh, mode, uh -huh. and I really got to grind it and hustle it because I want that you want bad. It. Like, I want that really bad. Mm -hmm. And The mommy mode, is, what's, what's more challenging? Because it, it, that, that implies that it's hard to be in mommy mode and then go after this. And get it real bad. Yeah. What's what's more challenging? Is it the mommy mode? The, is it the wife mode, or is it the career? It's it's really the mommy mode, really, because like I ha I got I got so used to like just being with my kids and like just being there, and like me knowing that I gotta like go places and like grind it out. Like some people, you know, like like some people just think like it's like oh well why don't you just get a tutor and this this and that like mm -hmm. to take your kid out of like that element of like their everyday life is not as sim simple as you think like my daughter goes to like school like a real school like mm -hmm. like to just take her out like it's like cuz i got to go to california work there for a couple of weeks it's like not as simple as you think like it's like it's great but you also feel guilty like mm -hmm. taking her out but you also feel guilty from being away and with bo with both my kids, really. So that's one, you know, just getting comfortable to that mommy life. Like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a little hard to balance yeah. both, especially uh -huh. when you have two kids now. Like, when with my first one, I was like, all right. But now that I got two, it's like. It's different, different, right? Yeah. It's different. I heard mm -hmm. Buster Rhymes say that uh, when he, did you see his speech at the um, BET Awards when he talked about his regret being that he missed out a lot of moments with his yeah. kids because yeah. he was working hard. Yeah. Do, do you fear that at all? Uh, I fear that, but that's why I make so much time with my kids because I don't ever want to like, 
like one thing, like it's like I feel like I've been working since I was like 17 nonstop, like nonstop. Like I was really shaking popping pussy for yep. like <laughs> six nights a week, like yeah. for real, for real. Like, and when I was working in a supermarket, like I was really working like six, maybe seven days a week. And like, like I feel like this is the most time that I have taken off like my whole entire life. And it's like, I have to take it off. Right? I, I, I have to do this for myself. Like, mm -hmm. cause these are like the memories that like, I'm going to like never forget. Like I, I have forgotten nights that I worked in the club, but I never forget the, the nights that I had a ball with my bitches or like I had a ball with like, with my guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I, I could forget like, like it's like damn when did when did we did that show like when did, did this happen like you could forget that but you never forget like the really good moments or like I don't forget no moments with my kids so mm -hmm. I I have to live that because I don't want to like get old and I gave so much to to like my work and it's like what did I give to myself like yeah. what memories do I have for myself mm -hmm. so I I ha I have to do that yeah. I have to do that. You're very fortunate that you you realize that now. Yeah. Because yeah. you're really still early in your career. Yeah. You just took off bigger than mostly everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, But true. it's great that you're figuring this out now, right? Absolutely. I agree. Hi, Cardi. Hey. It's good to see you in person. I think the last time we talked to you was on a Zoom. So it's good to oh, see you right. here. Um, Tracy and I talk about you a lot. We've mm -hmm. always appreciated the fact that you've been so embraceful to so many female artists. I think it's dope. Me coming out in the era in the 90s, it wasn't always like that. You know, it was a mm -hmm. lot of back and forth, a lot of pitting females against each other. And you still have some of that today. Yeah. So I just want to compliment you and commend you for doing that. You've been very embraceful, and I think it's good to have that, you know, yeah. especially where you are in your career. With that being said, as far as female rappers, I heard you talking earlier about sometimes being embarrassed about lyrics and making changes. Would you want your daughter to be a female rapper? happen one day if if that's what she likes mm -hmm. if that's what she likes and what she wants to do like like sure sometimes it's really hard to vision like my kids like doing mm -hmm. rap because like hip-hop to me is like relating mm -hmm. a lot so like I feel like if you don't have not like it's not really like a similar story, almost like a similar background, because, you know, like I'm a girl from the hood from the Bronx. Oh, but if you a girl from the hood in Atlanta, we are in two different places and, and we're two different type of people. But I still could relate to you because you went through like a type of struggle right. or like a, something. Right. You don't even got to go to a type of struggle. I just got to feel you like and it's like I feel like if you just rap and you don't really have like a similar not story to me but like something that I can just like I could feel I could feel your lyrics like sometimes yeah. you could rap but I can't feel your lyrics mm -hmm. if I can't feel your lyrics it would be weird so it's just like I don't know like how would I feel like my kids like mm, you know what I'm saying yeah. like rapping it's like They'll be rapping about mansions and yeah. Rose voices. Right. And yeah, <laughs> but you know, but me and my husband, we do be having these debates, uh -huh. and like he just be saying, like it's like, but hip hop is not the same anymore. Like somebody could like literally like, a uh, a uh, a guy could just mm -hmm. really can be can like live in a mansion or like he can do this and he can do that and like he got a hot ass song that just takes off on mm -hmm. TikTok yeah. or on the internet and mm -hmm. like that's it like you're you're popping for real like you're and it's mm -hmm. like yeah but i don't know i'm like a little like yeah. more like different or something you but sound like you hard to please Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> i am a little i am a little hard to please yeah. I, I came in front like i am hard to please but um yeah i mean like i don't know like that is something that like i have to like i i, I hip-hop to me is like a relatable thing yeah. too mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I feel what you're saying. I think, especially as the black community continues to increase in our money, in our wealth, in our mental health too, the one thing that is going to always be around for humans is adversity of any form. Mm. So there's going to be a point where I'm hoping the majority of us are not even going to come from the hood. But mm -hmm. we're still going to have heartbreak. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's still going to have to be spoken about. You're still going to have to deal with self-doubt. That's still going to be spoken about. Well, I don't even feel like it, it, it only has to be, like, about heartbreak and everything. Because, like, like when I saw... Like like when I saw Missy Elliott, like, mm -hmm. and her freak on. And, yeah. like, when I see Little Kim, like, when... when 
there wasn't really like well you know like they have come a little bit earlier but like when I started like understanding yeah. like music and like I, I I graduated from listening to Barney's <laughs> 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 to like yes. liking like like these type of music that yeah. I could like understand now because I'm like six years old right. like it's not even like a struggle thing it's just like something that I could just feel like when I look at you and I hear mm-hmm. it and I feel it like it's like oh shit like I don't know it's just it's just something that is like when you see somebody or mm. like their demeanor and it's like I can relate to them I fuck with it and then like there's people that is like can rap and it's like more performative mm-hmm. yeah more performative like, yeah. yeah you know that got me yeah. thinking like when um, Heather was mentioning all of the women that you've collaborated with. Yeah. And like earlier I was speaking to our producer, Torch, and I was like, bruh, I was watching the music video for Tomorrow 2 mm. last night. Mm-hmm. Your verse verse of 2022, without a doubt. <laughs> but when I was watching, I was looking at the comments. People, even though that came out last year, there are people who are commenting yesterday and saying how they're still stuck on this. And I was doing some research, and it's still, like, in the, I want to say, top 12 most-watched music videos of this year. And so I was like, dang, like, this is so indicative of how Cardi has always been a girl's girl. This is not, like, a business tactic. It feels like for you. And right now, we're in this era where a lot of women want to reclaim their femininity and they're doing that through like embracing, you know, um, softness through figuring out how they can make more friends with women, et cetera, et cetera. You feel like a girl's girl can be made or she's only born. Like what type of advice would you give to a woman who's trying to be more of a girl's girl? I don't really want to say, like, I'm, like, a girl's girl. Mm. Like, I, because I, it's, like, I don't really, like, because uh, I'm, I'm still, <laughs> like, I'm still, like, always, like, got my eye open. Like, I came from a, a woman's world. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, I, like, first of all, going going to high school, living in the Bronx is a survivor story when it comes to bitches. Like, we really 1090. <laughs> 1090 is 90% fucking gri- 10% loyal, 90% grimy. So it's like, wow. I, this. that's how I grew up. Really, yeah. For real. Yeah. And then I work in a strip club too. Like, it's like, I really didn't fuck with a lot of bitches. Like, mm-hmm. I always used to go in, go out, Bitch, you want to fight? You want to fight? And I always stuck with my squad. Mm-hmm. Like, m- my, my stripper best friend, friends are still my best friends. And, like, they always been the bitches I've always. So I'm not really, like, an open, open, open person mm-hmm. either. But um, when it comes to, like, collabing with these girls, I, I simply collaborate with them because I just, like, I really like their music. Like, yeah. I like their music. Like, it's like, like, I'm going to like their music before I like a male's male artist music because I'm a girl so like the shit that they saying like yeah. I'm relating and I'm like ah. I put in my tongue out like it's like that's why I collab with them because I feel like they're dope like it's like the shit you're saying mm-hmm. I like to listen to mm-hmm. I want to listen to it I just don't I I do songs with them because I like their music and I want you know if I like your music. Like, I want to work with you because I like your music. Right. But in the back of my head sometimes I do be scared because I don't want to get burnt. Like, like at the end of the day like I don't want to get burnt and like it's like once I like you and I fuck with you I really fuck with you so I feel like if you do some funny shit to me like I take shit real personal Mm -hmm. and it's like I stay quiet but once you do some funny shit like I really take that shit to the heart and it's like I I might not even have like a personal problem with you Mm -hmm. but when I see you I'm gonna tell you about yourself like I I really don't like that you did that Mm -hmm. so it's it's a little scary because like you could you you are, you a fan of these people's music. Right. Like, I'm a fan of your music. And I like and I want to collaborate with you because I'm a fan of your music. But then yeah. it's like, it's almost like risky because if but I really so start to you. like you and you break my heart, bitch. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the vulnerability. Like, no, and, I, and I really don't like to get burned because mm. I'm not even really, uh, I'm not like a friendly person, but like, I'm really not a person that fuck with a lot of people. I don't mm. fuck with a lot of people. And that's why I have, like, the same friends. You don't really see me with a lot of people like that. Mm-hmm. But luckily, I have collabed with, um, with like, a lot of women that I could say that it's like, I, I, I fuck with you. And, like, even if I don't talk with you every single day, like, right. 
if you get any drag on social media, bitch, I want to I wanna drag for you, bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, because I fuck with you like that. Like, bitch, mm-hmm. call me, bitch. Because I, I want to drag for you, bitch. Like, because being mm-hmm. a female artist is hard. Like, Hell it's yeah. really hard. Like, it's really, really well, what hard. What are some of those things, like, men, as... For us as men, we're not feeling all the. We don't. I can see. I could deduct my own self, but I don't know. Niggas the, in the industry yeah. is the same too. Okay, speak on that. What you mean? Niggas in the industry, like it, it be the. It's it's the same thing, but the thing is that like male is not gonna show it. Like uh, women like show it more. Uh-huh. Males is the same thing, but it's just like the industry is just to me funny all the type of way, yeah. all 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 the way yeah. around. Everybody uh-huh. to me is funny, so it's just like I'm really I'm really in an episode of power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like to me the industry is an episode of power and it's like it's like such a weird game because it's like it's like you gotta play with your patience like in the streets I could play how I wanna play like yeah. back then I could play how I wanna play like it's like I could I could handle you mm-hmm. but like I can't handle you like it's like gotta take it I gotta just take it yeah. like mm. with everything not just with the Everybody though, wow. like female, male, everybody. Exactly like this, there's a shady, there's a real shady business. Like bitch, there's a real fucking episode of motherfucking power, power. bitch. Like it's like you're really playing a fucking game, bitch. Like you think, you think like yeah, yeah, you're you're ghost and you feeling good. Next thing you know, oh bitch, yeah. it's it's real cut though. It's real nasty. This shit is nasty, bitch. You think the drug dealing world is This shit right here, the nasty for real. Is nastier than the drug dealing. Nasty. World. Shit is nasty. Wow. wow. But I'm playing the game. Like You're playing a good game. You got a good hand. Right. You winning the game. <laughs> Mike, jump in there. Well, Cardi, I want to go from the music industry in the streets to the halls of Congress. Um, because I can't think of a contemporary artist of our time who has faced more scrutiny and censorship questions and first amendment and freedom of speech mm-hmm. since like two live crew NWA. Um, I'm just wondering, I know how you, you've talked about the FCC coming down on you, but I'm just curious, as an artist, as a human being, as a person, how does it feel when you have politicians, the federal government, coming down on you? It's different to be critiqued from journalists, from the bloggers, people on Twitter and comments, but to have the federal government come down on you, I'm just wondering, how does that personally make you feel? I just feel like it was just like a little bit weird because I just don't feel like, like, for example, like when they were attacking me for WAP and like saying that that's like the most filthiest, crazy song in the world. I just didn't even, I don't think WAP is like the, probably, I don't feel like, I think like social media probably like made it bigger than what it is. But it's like, listen, I have heard some real raw, nasty motherfucking shit from Trina and Kaya. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't... And little Kim, like, hello. So it's just like, I don't understand why it was like such a, oh my gosh, this Mm -hmm. is so disgraceful. This is so distasteful. But it's like, I grew up listening to that shit. Like, it's like, y'all ain't ain't never heard of my nigga (laughs) back. That's true. Like, y'all ain't never heard, like, Trina when she said, nasty bitch, I'm making a nigga so his dick just to buy me shit. Like, it's like, it wasn't even like that raw to me. Like... I don't know. It just, mm-mm. I just, media. yeah, it's just social media. But I feel like I get attacked by a lot, a lot of politicians because, and I had to stray away from that. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like me and my dad, we're the same way. Like, we are very invest, invested in, like, politics. We are very invested in what's going on in the world to the point that sometimes it just drives me crazy and it drives me, like, paranoid. So I feel like a lot of people, will attack me because, you know, like, I have, like, an accent on my vocabulary or whatever the fuck, and they just think that a bitch is dumb. But it's like, I ain't dumb, bitch. I know what the fuck I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I know what the fuck I'm saying. I, I do my research. I really read, bitch. I really do watch the motherfucking news, motherfucker. Like, I don't know what the fuck y'all think I'm, I'm, I'm out here doing and shit. Like, I'm talking for a reason. Like, I'm talking for a reason because I feel like my people's going through some shit. And that's, like, right now, like, it's like, like, I used to endorse people and everything. I ain't endorsing nobody because I feel like right now everybody's suffering and nobody do a shit about it. Mm. So it's like I'm really passionate about that. So I just get attacked from that, and I I used to get so attacked so bad that I was like I have to I have to stray away from this. Like even my husband was like, you need to stop because motherfuckers <laughs> is talking about they're gonna burn our house down, bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> it get it gets deep like that. Yeah. It gets they deep show like up that. On your lawn. 
Uh, Cardi B is here, man. She got the new single, Bongos, featuring Meg, Meg the Stallion, who's also a citizen of Sway in the morning. I love when y'all get together. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all batting a thousand. I like the sound of the song. It reminds me of a, a indigenous place of percussions. You know, when you think about how music began and you trace it back to mm-hmm. tr- traditions in Africa or different mm-hmm. parts of uh, Latin America, those percussions yeah. and bongos. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of, to me, it, it stays in the realm of who you are and your background. Mm-hmm. Is that how you picked this song? No, well, um, we, you know, it's, it's the beat, bong, bong, mm-hmm. bong, bong, which is really funk. Okay. It's, and it's, funk is Brazilian. And, like, you know, sometimes a lot of people confuse, like, funk with, like, or like you know, like I guess, like you know, like Spanish music, mm-hmm. like thong or like dembo or something. But that sound is really funk, and um, I just love it. That shit just made me want to shake my ass right away. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I love this. He, even like set, like when he first heard the beat, he was like, oh, this is, this is this this ain't this what they be playing in the fucking clubs in New York? And I'm like, oh, sound like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you you got to because as soon as you put that, I'm like, all right, I'll. I'll circle back because I have a lot of songs. Yeah. I have a lot. Of you got a lot? I, I got you a lot. You sitting on some gems? I'm sitting on some Continue. gems. I know we got a lot of people who want to talk with you, and I'll be remiss. I'm a big set fan. I'm an offset yeah. fan. He always has shown me nothing but love. Um, yeah. The whole group did. It warmed my heart when I saw Quavo and Set step on that stage and perform and, uh, and, and pay homage to their, to their family. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I can only imagine for the family, and I know for the world of hip hop, for the world of bride, we love seeing that. You know, it's yeah. been some tough times, yeah. right? What was that day like when that came to fruition? I mean, it's so funny because I was trying to put like the the VT awards on my TV, so I had to watch it like on a on like uh, my phone. I was crying yeah. like a lot. I was crying a lot because. Mm-hmm. It just looks so beautiful, and them together, like, I was crying so much, like, yeah, I don't know, I, I just, you see, I just, like, yeah. It lights up, and I thought that was a great way to honor um, Takeoff. We hadn't had a mm-hmm. chance to really do that because of the tragedy of his loss and then everything now, yeah. else that was going on, so that kind of brought some closure. Did you feel that a little bit? Um, I feel like it, it brought closure, but it's too fresh. Yeah. yeah. It's too fresh. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just so fresh. And, like, like it's just, like, a day-by-day thing. Like, yeah. it's, like, sometimes you're good, and those thoughts just come and just come. And it's just so fresh Yeah. that, I don't know, I think time would just bring healing for mm-hmm. everybody. Because everybody's just really hurt. Yeah. So hurt. Like... So hurt, and it's just like it just doesn't feel the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I think, and it's interesting because as close as you were, we all felt closeness. So you're right; it doesn't feel the same. And I, I think it's a good thing to see you out and about because mm-hmm. you're kind of helping bring things, you know, back to the center. Cardi B is back; she's celebrating her music. She got new music coming out. This is all healing for us too to see you. you know? Yeah, and um. And for the boys too, I, 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 I just want them to do good mm-hmm. because I know for a fact, I know for a fact that like that's what take one. I know he wants them to yeah. win really bad, and I don't know. Like, I just, I just really want them to heal because they are hurting really bad. I understand that, and it takes time, and we're gonna do what we can to support it. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Uh, yeah. Invasion of privacy was such a huge smash. You know, everything you've done is a smash. When you make music now, do you make it for the charts? Do you make it for the accolades? Or what's your motivation behind your music now? Um, A little bit of everything. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a, a little bit of everything because um, now I just feel like I don't want to just make it like for the charts and all the time and this and that. Like it's like I just want to make it because I love it. Like, I love it. I fuck with it. Like, if I hear a song, I want to do it. I want to fuck with it. It's just a little bit hard on me because it's like, honey, Yeah. <laughs> if I don't do good, I get, like, I people have been 
<laughs> are always have always been extra extra hard on me mm-hmm. all the time. Like, I got a solution for that. Like, if they mm. hard on you, I I think next time you come up here, write a couple of verses and come spit a freestyle on our show. Yeah, that's what I need to do. That's what you, you need know. To do? You know, I be you know why I be afraid to do that? Why? Because of my accent. That's, That's what be stopping me. Really? I, I could I could spit, I could this wow. and that. My accent, I really like it scares me. My accent. Your ass, really? accent is your power. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, that's relatability as well. Yeah. Sam, let's look it up. You you know, when you get ready, yeah. Come back and spit some flames. I can spit some flames. Okay. <laughs> that's your power. That's what separates you from everybody mm-hmm. else. Look at the outcome. Look at the right. results. That's what's contributed to your success right now. Yes, yeah, your accent. Rock with it, uh, Cardi. We love your accent. Give it up for Cardi it's B, good. y'all. Listen, I want to thank you for coming back to the show. All right. It's done? Well, we got a lot of people lined up that want to talk to you. So, yeah, but come back. Yeah. Come back in the studio and hang out. And we just eat food, talk Word. life, and talk yeah. business, and spit some bars. Yeah. Okay? We love you, Cardi. Love you. Thank you. I love you guys, too. Love yeah. you, too. Yeah.